Hello. Good morning, everyone. Uh, in my opinion, so of course, so every session is important for us. But I think probably this session is best session, a kind of best session. I think so. So I I want to especially so introduce for you, uh, so moderator, two moderator, and uh, uh, first uh, uh, Naomi Lee. Uh, so from the uh, Melbourne, Melbourne University of Australia. So in this period, he was a uh, professor, as you saw. And uh, the other moderator, uh, Hyobo Kwak, uh, our in our university in Korea. Okay. So you expect is a good session, as you saw. So. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, for your kind introduction, uh, Dr. King. Uh, it is time to start the uh, uh, highlighted symposium number five, focus on my time. Uh, you have um, uh, four uh, invited speakers. Uh, let me just uh, 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 moderate first the two speakers and Dr. Uh, uh, Rin uh, take her up with the uh, uh, second part of uh, the uh, speaker. So let me just, uh, you're going to just start the uh, first uh, speaker. Let me just introduce uh, Dr. Uh, Naomi Ring. Uh, Dr. Ring is a senior researcher at Metabolic, Metabolic Signaling Laboratory of a Protein Chemistry and Metabolism in St. Vincent Institute of Medical Research, uh, the world famous laboratory of uh, AMP kinase. She, uh, receive a bachelor degree in biochemistry and plant and bio or microbial science from the University of Canterbury and master degree as a first class honors in plant uh, uh, biotechnology from the University of Canterbury and PhD from the University of um, Melbourne. <coughs> Today, uh, she's going to talk about AAP kinase in exercise and health. Please give him a big hand. Give her a big hand. Thank you very much for your kind invitation. Um, first of all, good morning. Hope you all had a good sleep. And um, especially thank you for the committee member, uh, organizing committee member, for your kind invitation uh, to give a brief review on the MPK in exercise and health. So I currently work as SDI and uh, it is stated in Melbourne and one of the world's most livable city. So uh, within an hour drive or so, you, beside the sky rise within, you can also see a very nice landscape. So hopefully some of you might visit us down south in the future. Right, so what is the AMPK? What is its, regu what is its function? It is a regulate cellular metabolism and also energy homeostasis in response to metabolic stress, hormonal signal, as including cytokines as well as drugs. So when exercise, the principal molecules for storing and transfer energy, that's ATP, the level of it will drop while at the same time the ADP and AMP level increase. This will trigger and activate MPK and therefore NPK would then regulate the energy homeostasis. Uh, how does it do? First of all, it will switch on the catabolic pathway that produces ATP. Uh, in cellular level, these are such as glycolysis and beta oxidation and so on. And in the whole body level, it will try to increase the food intake. At the same time, it will also switch off or inactivate anabolic pathway that consume ATP and at cellular level they are various synthesis pathway and at whole body level these are by de uh, decreasing the thermogenesis or energy expenditure. So how does NPK uh, regulate all these various pathway? It does so by protein phosphorylation. So let me introduce what protein phosphorylation is just very simply. Uh, it is uh, the way that kinases take the fossil group that has been donated by ATP and then put it onto the next different protein, uh, metabolic protein. By doing so, it can inactivate, activate or modify its function and therefore uh, regulate its pathway. This whole, uh, pathway. this whole regulation can be reversed by protein phosphatases. In cellular context, for instance, extracellular signaling that can activate 
uh, kinases such as LKB1 and KMKK in the case of NPK, and then these kinases can then phosphorylate NPK. NPK can then phosphorylate uh, metabolic enzymes such as ACC, and therefore giving an output of, for instance, fatty acid synthesis will be dropped and fatty acid oxidation will increase. Now, since we're in Korea, I thought it's worth mentioning that actually the ACC phosphorylation was first discovered by a Korean scientist, uh, Kim Ki-han, in 1973. So the root is based in Korea. Um, now let's look into the NPK in more detail. It is a heterotrimer uh, protein, so it consists of alpha, beta, and gamma, as you can see uh, on the STAs page at the top there. Yep. Um, so there are two possible isoforms for alpha, two possible isoforms for beta, and three possible isoforms for gamma. As a result, there are 12 possible complexes for NPK. But not all 12 complexes are expressed at the same time in all the tissue. For instance, in muscle, uh, the major complexes expressed are alpha 2, beta 2, gamma 1, and gamma 3. And as you can see across different uh, Fiber type, it also being expressed slightly differently in the percentage. So, subunit alpha consists of kinase domain where uh, threonine 172 is, uh, is found. I don't think I'm very good at using this point. Anyway, uh, at the top there. And this is an important uh, site because it can be phosphorylated by LKB1 and KMKK. And by phosphorylation, it will activate the NPK. And the beta subunit consists of carbohydrate binding module where the serine 108 sits. And this uh, molecule is found to be important for drug binding. And on the amino acid 2 glycine, there is a manipulation where it enable this protein to be anchored to the membrane. In gamma subunit, there is four tendon repeat of cystathione beta synthase where the nucleotide such as MP, ADP, and ATP can bind. So since this session is actually about myokines, I thought I'd just show a quick uh, one screen to sh show you there's a high relevance between myokines, adipokines, adipomyokines, and MPK. Just picking a few examples, uh, myostatin and IL-6, you can see they exert uh, effects such as glucose metabolism, protein synthesis, fatty acid, and so on. Uh, but MPK, while also in leptin and adiponectin, uh, that regulate food intake also been found to be for MPK. Now, we all know that exercise has two major categories, one resistance and one endurance. On, uh, and these two exercises actually uh, switch on different uh, measures in the pathway and adaptation. So in resistant training, uh, it is mainly for M2, and then uh, on the Endurance training, it is mainly for NPK. So for uh, today's uh, focus, I just want to make, uh, mainly touch on the NPK side. So when exercise, metabolic stress, cause activation of NPK. And this can then exert various health uh, benefit effects, uh, such as glucose uptake and fatty acid uptake for phosphorylation of TBC1D1 and TBC1D4 by MPK. So TBC1D4 is also known as AS160. It can also increase fatty acid oxidation by phosphorylation on ACC2, mitophagy by ULK1, as well as mitochondrial biogenesis, and uh, gene, uh, mitochondrial genes and good for gene transcription Valve phosphorylation of FOX or 3, HTEP5 and PGC1 alpha uh, by the phosphorylation by MPK. So, when MPK muscle is activated by exercise, it is actually subunit specific and exercise intensity independent, as been, been shown by a study by Trey Park. Um, using cycling at different intensity level, they show that on the only complex that Increased activity significantly is alpha 2, beta 2, and gamma 3. And for 90 minutes at 67% and VO2 peak, it shows that alpha 2, beta 2, gamma 3 is the only complexes that increase significantly in activity after 30 minutes, while the other two major complexes only increase significantly after 60 minutes. 
Furthermore, the ACC2 phosphorylation has been co closely correlated with alpha 2, beta 2, and gamma 3 activity, suggesting this complex to possibly involve in fatty acid oxidation. While the AS160 phosphorylation or TBC1D4 phosphorylation highly correlated with alpha 2, beta 2, and gamma 1, suggesting possible involvement in glucose uptake. Now let's look into the health now uh, uh, for MPK as target for type 2 diabetes intervention. We know that in healthy human, um, via the insulin AKT pathway, the glucose GLUT4 can be translocated to membrane and increase glucose uptake. However, we know that this pathway is impaired in type 2 diabetes. And the good news coming here for MPK because there's another pathway that is uh, about bar MPK phosphorylating that can phosphorylate TBC1, D1, and D4 independent of insulin and AKT pathway to also uh, increase GLUT4 translocation to the membrane and increase the glucose uptake. Now, this, uh, this pathway has been shown to intact in type 2 diabetes, therefore the, this is a hot target for pharmaceutical company for uh, looking at this um, type 2 diabetes in intervention. Furthermore, alpha 2, beta 2, gamma 3 exercise elevated uh, complex has also shown a cor correlation with TBC1D1, especially phosphorylation on serine 237 and serine uh, ferrin 596 which have been shown to be important for exercise glucose uptake and being shown to be intact in type 2 diabetes. There are various other researches that have been done uh, to show the importance of MPK in uh, type 2 diabetes intervention. For instance, uh, MPK activators such as metformin in type 2 diabetes patient, acre in rodent uh, at rest, both show increase in glucose transport. And also, MPK necessity for contraction stimulated glucose uptake and also enhancement of insulin sensitivity after exercise were also being shown using a muscle specific knockout on the MPK. Uh, in knockout, set, knockout mouse, they have shown the drop in the glucose transport as well as that the insulin sensitivity was not enhanced when MPK is knockout. Finally, MPK also been shown to regulate it normally in type 2 diabetes patients, whether they are lean, obese, or, or overweight control to the uh, compared to the control patient. Alright, let's move to the cancer now. MPK is also a hot target for cancer therapy. This started when LKB1, a tumor suppressor, was found to activate MPK. Now, LKB1 is found in like one third of lung cancer to be inactivated, and it has also been found in breast cancer that 90% of MPK is reduced. And when they introduced MPK alpha 2, it was shown the suppression of the tumor. Furthermore, MPK also uh, found to activate TCS2, a second tumor suppressor, which can inhibit mTOR and therefore the growth. MPK also uh, been found to inhibit mTOR directly, and mTOR uh, activity increase has been found in many types of cancers. So MPK regulation on TSC2 and mTOR is suggested to have a special implication on cancer therapy. But the complication come in the fact that MPK regulate metabolic plasticity as well. This gives a growth advantage to tumor cells <coughs> under metabolic stress. So uh, let's look at a bit more detail. So in high glucose, where nutrition is, uh, there's a lot of nutrition, we can see that MPK is inactivated, so therefore mTOR is activated and hence the growth and proliferation. While in low glucose, we expect MPK to be activated and therefore mTOR to be inactivated and we expect the growth and proliferation to grow, drop down. However, in cancer, MPK also phosphorylate P338, PGC1 alpha, and PFK2. All these can contribute the, to the oxidative metabolism of uh, non glucose um, uh, stuff such as lactate, glutamine, and fatty acid to increase the ATP, hence, allow the cell to survive. So, MPK can actually be pro and anti tumor depending on the context and the cell type. So putting in the table as a summary, we can see that 
When MPK is activated, it can be pro-tumor valve mitophagy and fatty acid oxidation, anti-tumor by reduction of proliferation and uh, growth, and the reverse is true when it is inhibited. Hypothalamus MPK is also a increasingly more hot target for against obesity. Unlike the muscle that express beta 2 and is a major subunit in brain, uh, hypothalamus MPK that uh, exp uh, is highly expressed are alpha 1, B alpha 2, beta 1, and gamma 1. And when energy is depleted, so MPK is uh, activated, hypothalamus MPK is activated and this will cause uh, food in intake to be increased. So in this con context, we actually want to look at MPK inhibitors for the target of against obesity. Now various factors have been found that phosphorylate MPK that is shown in blue box here and also a low reverse phosphorylation of MPK uh, shown in pink. Um, in this, uh, a, a lot more detailed review can be found on the review paper site the update. If you are more interested in this area, please refer to those. Now, finally, I would like to talk a bit about the uh, exercise mimetic or activator for MPK and inhibitors. <coughs> so since MPK uh, is found as a target for metabolic syndrome, um, so there is more and more natural or synthetic uh, act activator that has been reported. More recently, there is uh, SC4. Uh, SC4 uh, from our lab that we have found it is to be alpha 2 selective and uh, we've shown that it improved the glucose uptake in mouse, mouse model. Also, recently there's two other um, non selective MPK activated PF739 and MK8722. Both of these uh, and 739 have shown a drop in glucose meta uh, blood glucose and H722 have shown improvement in diabetes in the animal. However, since it is non-selective, it has also caused a problem of enlargement of heart, hypertrophy, and so on. Um, so this actually suggests the importance of future <coughs> MPK activator to be more tissue selective. Uh, at the screen, you can also see on your right, there's an example of MPK crystal, uh, which uh, the crystallographer from our lab can use to build up a model. As you can see here, uh, blue is a beta, alpha in green, and gamma in pink. And also you can see where the MPK sits in the uh, gamma, and where the drugs such as SC4 uh, sit at the atom site, which we call allosteric drug and metabolic site. So with this method, we can exactly pinpoint to what amino acid is important uh, for the binding. So finally, we'll look at uh, inhibitors. We know that currently the standard inhibitors that's used in MPK study is uh, compound C, but it is also not very specific. So uh, it is desirable to find a new uh, inhibitors. So here I'd like to just present uh, uh, 6965 as a new inhibitors for uh, MPK. We have IC50 that is a lot lower compared to compound C. Furthermore, we have also tried to IP inject uh, this compound into the mouse that is overnight fitted and have shown uh, accumulative food intake uh, drop significantly, suggesting it's uh, potentially developed, can be potentially developed into uh, anti obesity drugs. So, in summary, uh, today I've shown that MPK as a regulator of energy homeostasis and cell metabolism and how closely the adipo and myokines are closely related uh, with MPK and that the regulation of MPK by exercise are isoform specific and also intensity dependent and MPK is an attractive uh, target for type 2 diabetes and cancer although many more um, studies have to be done with the MPK in uh, progression of uh, cancer and also uh, MPK inhibitors as a target against obesity and importance of tissue selective MPK activator and SIG965 as a potential new inhibitors. Due to the uh, time that have been allocated and so on, uh, I cannot cover a lot of area, other areas, but for those who, are, who might like to start a new, maybe use an MPK and study, uh, for the animal model study, there's, uh, you can refer to Violet's paper, there's a list of uh, a lot of animals that you, you 
can have a look at that. You might be able to contact to with the relevant people. And also, this recently published this year uh, on the whole book on MPK. So for those who are interested in like MPK uh, method study and various other places, you can also refer to that book. And finally, for those who are more interested in proteomic uh, study of MPK um, and the uh, MPK signaling network and network mapping, please refer to Hongman's paper. And uh, just recently, uh, in, uh, we referred this uh, website that's been up on the uh, exercise and cancer uh, in Australia. So if you're interested, please refer to the website. For those who are interested to uh, follow up a bit more of what we're doing and uh, please look, uh, please go to our website. So I work in two labs. So one is metabolic signaling. Uh, with um, in this lab we look more into the signaling pathway and regulation of NPK. We also look at the small molecules uh, inhibitors, activators, and how the, they function, uh, especially in structure, as well as looking at drug synergy effect. Uh, in protein chemistry and metabolism lab. We look at MPK regulation on lipid metabolism, KMKK2 and brain function, uh, MPK and appetite, and also MPK binding to glycogen and the cholesterol metabolism. We also have a close uh, collaboration with Australian Catholic University in uh, exercise and nutritional research program with Professor John Holly, who is more in the exercise field, and Dr. Nolan Hoffman. This we uh, collaborate uh, closely on glycogen and MPK. And with Korea University, with Professor Hyun Soo Kim, who will be talking next, uh, and Dr. Jun Lok Lee, we cooperate closely on methionine like protein and PK. And finally, with Flinders University, uh, with Associate Professor Johnny Peterson, we look at mTOR regulation and MPK. With this, thank you so much for your attention. Okay. Hey, uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Lin, for your uh, very interesting and excellent uh, presentation. Uh, she uh, Introduce, demonstrate the role of AMP uh, in exercise, uh, protein synthesis, di type to diabetes, obesity, and cancer therapy. Uh, next, we're going to move to q and time. If you have any question or comment, just raise your hand and you just tell us your name, institution, and then ask a question. Okay, uh, to save time, I have a quick question. I just, uh, my research is focused on exercise. You mentioned, you know, it's a, there are two kinds of exercise. One is a recent exercise, the other is uh, aerobic exercise, right? So based on your presentation, uh, resistance exercise uh, simulate increased mTOR signaling leading to protein synthesis. However, aerobic exercise uh, stimulate AMP kinase leading to uh, decrease mTOR signaling might be leading to uh, decrease in protein synthesis. Yes, so which true. means is uh, 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 aerobic exercise might be inhibit the effect of uh, resistant exercise training in terms of uh, protein synthesis. I'm very curious I, about I that. Guess, uh, I guess it is well known in fitness industry, especially for those who, are, who <coughs> like to uh, uh, weight build, like muscle building, they always try to prescribe a more like protein shake, uh, resistance training with less aerobic training. And I guess that's one of the main reasons for that. And uh, yeah, so I guess this are uh, up to the fitness um, instructor as to where I guess what the uh, participants need is if they are the you know the bodybuilder then I guess by understanding this pathway then it's one of the good way to to prove that that's why you need to do more weight training rather than uh, aerobic training and for those people who are suffering obesity it is more important probably more concentrate on aerobic rather than weight to start with although weight training do increase the mitochondria and therefore overall uh, you know. Uh, metabolism rate, but uh, uh, I guess that do come down to the uh, the design of uh, you guys are more expert on this, I think. <laughs> thank, so, you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. Any? Yeah, Dr. Kim. Thank you very much. My name is Kim. Okay, almost similar question. Uh, so usually, so we are we are pro pre pre prevention. We try to prevent of cancer, so we are exercise elevation is a good method, I see so. Usually so, uh, I think in my opinion, your presentation, uh, 
So in the depends on different exercise. So in the recruitment, the AMPK activation of units so deeper. For example, the LOE exercise and resistance exercise. In this, that time, so difference over the recruitment AMPK activation sub unit deeper. Yeah. Right. So they, I think now uh, initially the earlier research has just been looking at AMPK as a case, but the the more recent paper that <coughs> emphasized the importance of a uh, uh, AMPK subunit specificity and also like the, in different uh, fiber type like type one and type two the MPK complex also distribute quite differently and then therefore also in certain muscle they are more important in glucose uptake uh, and in relation to exercise they has at the moment we found that uh, EDL the fast twitch fiber muscle seem to be more important uh, and also actually in like uh, sarcopenia and all that sort of area there has been a study because they now say that um, they have one of the papers mentioning that the alpha 2 gamma 3 and alpha 1 gamma 3 as the aging there's more uh, change toward alpha 2 gamma 2 and alpha 1 gamma 1 so uh, gamma 3 seems to be something that is quite exercise related um, so uh, there's a lot of uh, and also in cancer not all the I guess uh, from uh, Professor Kim yesterday that was uh, talking about cancer and exercise there's actually not all the exercise is beneficial for all the cancers so uh, there's still a lot more uh, study to correlate what we uh, found and also what is actually critically, uh, you know, we, I guess so I think it's very important there's more collaboration with, uh, from what I understand, uh, the audience here are looking more into practical side of it and uh, our lab is slightly more uh, basic science so I think there's an uh, importance of uh, understanding and collaboration to uh, make it more uh, yeah, useful I agree. I agree. So, uh, uh, of course, it's already allowed. I don't have the exact data. So, you change your subunit. Yeah. Uh, depends on different exercise types. So, uh, probably, I think, in my opinion, so when you try to you know, the application of exercise innovation pre for the prevention of cancer, so we must consider the, for example, the APK subunit as data changes. I see so. Yeah. So in in the end, in the area of cancer, it is uh, very much the cell type de dependent and the uh, cancer type dependent as well. In prostate cancer, for instance, MPK activation is not encouraged. It's actually the other way around because <coughs> the MPK are so up high. Uh, so we actually want to stop that. So in certain cancer, uh, such as breast cancer, especially the MPK somehow seems to be uh, gone. So we want to activate. It. So uh, yeah, so it really is, I guess uh, that keeps us with job, but <laughs> it is still quite a lot of uh, ex uh, investigation to be done. Yeah. yeah, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, because of a limited uh, time schedule, you're going to move to the next speaker. Please give a big hand to Dr. Lee. Thank you. Just to introduce the, the second invited speaker, Dr. Hyun Soo Kim. Uh, Dr. Kim is a vice professor of the Department of Anatomy at uh, Korea University College of Medicine in South Korea. Uh, he got the bachelor degree in medicine from Korea University, master degree in medical biotechnology from the Great School of uh, uh, biotechnology at the same school, Korea University. And then he got the uh, doctorate degree in cell signal reintroduction from uh, Postec. He has been actively publishing numerous papers on markers from metabolic syndrome. Uh, today he's going to talk about my client, novel research target. Please give him a big hand. Thanks to Chairperson for a kind introduction. And I also thank the organizing committee of ACK, uh, especially to Professor Kijin Kim of Kemen University and Jung Seok Oh of Dakong University. In addition, I also thank to all of you in this conference. Uh, my name is Hyun Soo Kim of Korea University and I, today I will talk about myokine and uh, just introduction 
I went to outside the novel research target. So please feel comfortable. Just enjoy my talk. Uh, my talk is composed of several parts. Uh, in the beginning, I will introduce the definition of my kind. And up to now, I studied of my kind about three or four years, and I'll show my previous data of my kind. In the middle, I want to talk about the relationship between my kind and sarcopenia. And in the later part, I will introduce what my kind my study as the research target to overcome the sarcopenia state. Let me start by talk by introducing my kind. Definition is very simple. <coughs> this molecule, this protein, is produced by muscle during muscle contraction. So nowadays, the paradigm of muscle should be changed. Okay? For a long time, we thought skeletal system is just structures. Okay? But now, skeletal system is endocrine system because this system secret myokine and its role is very similar with hormone but big difference is its working concentration you know the hormone works at micromolar concentration but interestingly this molecule works very low concentration, picomolar concentration. So the working load is very similar with hormone, but concentration is very different. So far, there are three kinds of cytokine. First generation is lipokine. Second generation is adipokine. And third generation is myokine. Lipokine was identified in 1965 by finding that interferon gamma was secreted from activated T cells. Adipokine was found in 1994 by finding it from adipocyte. 2007, this molecule first identified one kind was found to be secreted from muscle. So from this time, the myokine studies was studied. Nowadays, many people believe these molecules behave as exercise mimetic agent. I talk about the importance of myokine. Two facts prove okay. the important. First is the list of patterns many institute has a myokine pattern. This table shows the name of the list. But the big companies pattern of myokine like Ahmed and Jimfen it means myokine has meaning okay, and clinical before it can be developed as drug target <coughs> let's picture the list of nations which has myokine pattern more than half around 64% of mankind pattern were from United States. And then China, Europe, and Japan. In case of Korea, less than 10%. 
this cupid shows the life can already become hot, hot in such a way. This slide shows the tissue distribution of mica. Upper shows the a list of famous mica, and this panel shows tissues which have receptors for mica. As expected, most of receptors of mica were expressed in muscle. That is natural because muscle secret mica. But interestingly, other tissues like adipocyte, heart, and urine also express receptors for mica. This means mica has various roles in each tissue. Um, I studied of my kinds from 2013. So this is the summary of our my kind studies so far. Uh, we published three papers and we got two patterns. Very interestingly, some my kinds work in muscle and other my kinds work in other tissues like cancer or urine. Now we are Studying some more novel myokines. One myokine we are collaborating with uh, former speakers, Naomi Lee of Australia. This result suggests one implication of myokine. Myokine has tissue specific function like glucose regulation in muscle or some apoptosis or neuroprotection in other tissues. Now let me talk about sarcopenia. The definition of sarcopenia is like this. Okay? Sarc means threat with muscle. Penia means poverty. So sarcopenia means some state of loss of skeletal muscle, like this picture. And around 1% of muscle loss per year after age of 50. And the quality of strength also weakened. So, at some point, it's a natural process during the age of person. At this picture. Okay. In all states, the muscle, the mass of muscle decreases. Okay. This is a sarcopenic state. Then, this sarcopenic state is unavoidable. I think it may not. We can protect the sarcopenic state. Like this, okay? In old ages, you can make muscle okay? by study, okay? So the question is how to avoid sarcopenia? How to protect muscle loss during the aging person? It is a big question and critical. Then, how to regulate muscle? Is it possible? I think it's possible. The key molecule is the myokine. Okay? This myostatin is the first identified myokine. This picture shows the sarcopenic state. Okay? A sarcopenia is a, a state of muscular atrophies, like these pictures. And this status occurs during aging or some disease status or lack of exercise. And 
the phenotype of myostatin, phenotype, very problematic. Okay. This is a wild type, myostatin. But in knockout status, if deleted myostatin, then the size of muscle become giant. Okay. It means inhibition of this myostatin can protect okay, the sarcopenic status. So now our research object is identification of myostatin regulating component okay, to protect the sarcopenic status. So far, many papers suggest the relationship between myocardium and sarcopenia in human studies, animal studies, and molecular studies. Few papers suggest the relationship. Based on all these facts, we can develop the following hypothesis. Myocardium studies can be a molecular target for sarcopenia protein. In this field, very competitive and in international research. The big groups are USA and Europe. In American College of Sports Medicine, suggests just physical activity to protect sarcopenia. In Europe, they suggest lifestyle change or in some cases, they suggest pretty return. Also, the current state of sarcopenia result is new target is urgently required. So if we find some candidate, it can be blood pressure drug in this field. Then how about the current situation? for sarcopenia treatment. Not satisfactory because there are two problems. First problem is there is no standard diagnosis <coughs> for sarcopenia. Second, there is no specific drug for sarcopenia state. In the industry, many candidates are suggested like TNF alpha, interleukin 6, myostatin, ghrelin, and androgen receptors. Among these, we are interested in and we are focused on myostatin. This is our preliminary result. We found four agents regulate myostatin. Among them, two are already known facts and two are your findings. According to the previous report, AMK activation activate myostatin regulation. I call and metformin. In our system, they still increase the myostatin expression. It's no fact. And we found two novel findings. One is uh, FST1, a kind of migraine, increase the myostatin expression and the other one is isoproteinol beta receptor agonist also increase the expression of myostatin these are the over things now we are uh, trying to uh, calculate the mechanism and the meaning of these findings we have some system to characterize this is uh, our experimental lineup for uh, paper publication with uh, micron studies. Okay. The double check system okay, in vitro and combined with in vivo system. Okay. Our final goal is uh, to identify as myostatin regulators as molecular targets for uh, sarcopenia stated. This is uh, for paper publication. 
Second is to develop target. Okay. This is the lineup for pattern registers. Okay. The system should be different okay. to publication or to get pattern should be different. So we have uh, two different systems. This is uh, with micro studies or exercise. And goal is to identify stroke target from exercise induced uh, micro. This is the summary of my talk and vision of our exercise induced micro studies. First, we want to identify one first biostatin regulating agent. We already established the system and now we try to identify target for sarcopenia status. After identifying, naturally we go to the characterization studies about myostatin gene regulation mechanism. If we characterize this mechanism, then we can try okay, to identify muscle mass regulating agent. We can increase muscle mass okay, with our agent. And finally, we will validate our findings in sarcopenia models. And after this, Try. Okay. I think we can understand the exercise in a more scientific basis. To do this, uh, uh, we need a strong collaboration with uh, HK members like you because uh, we have <laughs> a strong system to characterize, to identify the target, but we need a system to prove its meaning in human or in excess models. Please interest my studies. And thanks to SK committee and also thank you for your listen. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, very much uh, Dr. Uh, Kim for your very interesting uh, topic myokine. Uh, he uh, uh, demonstrate the role of myokine associated with uh, sarcopenia in health and disease. Uh, you're going to move to Kenya time. If you have any comment or questions. Yes. Yeah. Oh, oh, one second. Oh. Mike, please. Thank you. Lee from Texas and University of San Antonio. So I was very interested in this myostatin. So actually, I worked uh, uh, this project back to 2003 in the University of Pennsylvania. As you know, there are different ways to uh, block the effectiveness of myostatin. So I guess you decide to use folistatin or folistatin like a proteins instead of a you know, receptor blocker. So what is the advantages for having uh, inhibitory protein instead of a receptor blocker? to block the myostatin effects? Uh, okay, good point. Uh, first, uh, I'm interested in the mechanism of myostatin regulation. And we have many characterization systems okay, to characterize the uh, expression system, but I want to develop the clinical candidate then, uh, you know, the, as a clinical candidate, some chemical or small molecules is, is more better than protein itself. Because protein has some, sometimes, in some cases, limitation to try it in the human level, or in clinical basis. So, uh, we want to identify some different form of than a protein itself. Okay. 
Any comment? Yeah, you said uh, uh, myokine, a uh, skeletal muscle secrete myokine. Myokine associated with the sarcopenia. I'm just wondering the myokine from old aged muscle might be different from myokine from young muscle. Have ever uh, uh, measured the difference between them? <laughs> Maybe your point is right, uh, can I, uh, but um, I didn't measure the difference, but maybe the I think so. Okay, but, but, uh, but in this field, many, there are many suggestions, there are many hypotheses. So I think there's some systemic approach is required now in the stages, so, but it takes a long time. So if I got some very dramatic Head findings, then with the long plan, okay. that design should be done and checked. Okay, thank you. Okay, yeah, Sam, you have no time. So you're going to move to the next speaker. Thank you very much for your Thank you. So our next speaker is uh, Dr. Hyo Yu Moon from uh, uh, he's an assistant professor of exercise physiology at Seoul National University. He's a graduate from top university in uh, Korea. So Seoul National University, uh, from what I understand, it's one of the Sky University, uh, and also Pohang University of Science and Technology, which I also learned that it's uh, one of the best uh, university in uh, science and engineering. So today he will be uh, presenting his talk with the title Muscle Over Mind. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Naomi Lee, for your kind introduction. And I appreciate all the committee members and, and the staff for the invitations. And, um, and, and it's a great honor for me to have a presentation here today. Actually, my, uh, I'm going to talk about my uh, rec recent research, and then my research actually based, it's almost, my idea of research is almost similar, uh, it's on the same line with uh, Dr. Kim's idea that uh, myotines can affect the other organs. So, yeah, in this talk, I will talk about um, the one of the pathway molecular mechanism uh, in uh, muscle and brain communication. So, um, early 20th century Nobel laureate um, Santiago Lamon Gayal established, established the neuron doctrine that there is no new neurons in the adult brain. Uh, he stated that everything may die, nothing may be uh, regenerated. But, uh, Half of the decade later, uh, people found that this uh, there is new neurons in the brain, and they found neurogenesis is conserved in all the memory systems from from mouse cat, uh, mouse to uh, monkeys and human. Particularly, there are two specific area uh, involved in the neurogenesis. The, First part is subventricular zone of retroventricle, which is uh, important in olfactory <coughs> system, and the other one is hippocampus, identity gyrosomy hippocampus, uh, which uh, also have a very important role in memory, mood, and cognition uh, test. In 1999, uh, Dr. Henry Bamprag and Frederick Gage. Uh, uh, found that there is uh, more new neurons in the learner's brain and uh, using the uh, immunofluorescence staining they found that there are more uh, new neurons in the uh, gyrus of the hippocampus uh, of learners and many following studies uh, <coughs> many following studies follow up the these papers and found some molecular mechanisms such as uh, increased uh, IGF-1 and VGF-1 and VDNF-1 which can increase the neurogenesis, can uh, uh, 
which can increase the neurogenesis. However, <coughs> however, we all want <laughs> As skeletal muscle, uh, uh, mostly we use the skeletal muscle, like an M. And as you can see here, the uh, relative oxygen consumption rate is almost 80% of total <coughs> oxygen cons consumption rate. Uh, so, um, and then uh, as Dr. Naomi Lee already talked about uh, uh, AMP kinase, so I will um, briefly. Uh, introduce to this slide and uh, exercise activate the AMP kinase and uh, ICAR, which is the mimetic of AMP, can activate the AMP kinase. So we, so we try to um, determine, determine whether peripheral effect, peripheral skeletal muscle uh, can have any effect on the brain functions. So using that uh, AMP mimetic I Ipar, we treat this Ipar to the wild time mice and the muscle specific AMP kinase deficiency mice and, and, and did some behavior tests and found uh, there is improved motor behavior and special memory function uh, induced by uh, Ipar administration and that was, not sh that was not shown in the muscle specific AMP kinase deficiency mice. And also, um, in 2014, uh, Agdala and uh, his colleague found that uh, excess, uh, that also found that uh, some factors, physician alpha induced to uh, canurinic acid transferase can uh, affect the brain function. Through the uh, through regulation of the kinurinic acid in the brain uh, blood, so those uh, kind of uh, studies uh, suggest us that there should be some mediators that affect the uh, uh, affecting the peripheral effect on the brain function. So uh, we try to identify that mediators between uh, uh, muscle and brain communication during exercise. So. Uh, we made the exercise mimetic condition in the uh, skeletal cell uh, line with treatment of IPER and uh, harvest the uh, culture soup and did the uh, high, high performance repeat chromatography. And as you can see here, we so, uh, see the several uh, uh, peaks that is different from big treated cultured media. And then we concentrate those peaks, uh, and then treat those concentrated peaks into uh, fractions into the uh, neuronal cells, and found some that some fractions have uh, neurogenic effect. So we did further uh, analysis using a proteomic approach, and we get some candidate that is in the in the fra uh, effective fractions, and using the filtration steps like protein size cutoff and um, label frequentification, we got the one interesting candidate, Kazepsin B, which is a system protease. Uh, and to validate that, uh, we checked the level of Kazepsin B expression uh, in the plasma after uh, voluntary exercise. And as you can see here, 14 days and 30 days of a voluntary exercise increased the calcium B level uh, in the blood. And then uh, also we also found that the, the calcium B protein level was increased in the um, 30 days of running in the gastrocnemius, the skeletal muscle. Uh, then we are curious about the law of Kasepsin B in the ex exercise. So uh, for this, we used the uh, uh, Kasepsin B deficient mice, uh, and uh, using those mice, we did some behavior tests, and there were not that big difference in motor behavior or mood-related behaviors. 
but we found uh, one interesting in the special memory test uh, in the Morris water maze test. Uh, learning can enhance the special memory test in the wild type. However, the, the effect was gone in the Kasabsun B knockout mice. As I mentioned, um, neurogenesis is also strongly associated with uh, uh, cognitive functions, so we further checked the effect of Kasabsun B uh, in the neurogenesis using neurogenesis marker double protein. And as you can see, uh, learning increased the neurogenesis markers uh, in the hippocampus. Uh, however, in the knockdown mice, we didn't see the uh, significant uh, changes uh, after learning. I didn't prepare this. <laughs> so that means there are uh, lots of immature cells induced by uh, exercise, but that was uh, not shown in the and custom being not done mice. So we further uh, uh, checked the uh, physiological property of uh, granular cells, uh, which is a major, major cells in, in, at the, uh, in the dentate gyrus of the campus. Uh, and electrophysiological data shows that uh, there is a significant decrease in uh, the frequency of granular cell in the Kazasumi knockdown mice, which indicate, implies that there is a dysfunction of inhibitory neurotransmission as a system in uh, the granular cells. So further, we uh, checked the direct effect of Kazasumi B on uh, the hippocampal progenitor cells by uh, direct administration of those recombinant Kazasumi B. And as you can see, there is not that significant effect on cell survivor or um, cell death. However, what we found was that uh, this treatment of uh, Kazakhstan B can increase the uh, level of double protein, which is the um, uh, marker of the neurogenesis, uh, neuro, neuronal differentiation and the BDNF, uh, which is a neuronal, uh, it is involved in the neuronal um, plasticity. And then we raise the question whether this Kasabsin B level of Kasabsin B change can uh, happen in the uh, primates like uh, monkeys and humans. So we train the monkeys, uh, train monkey to uh, walk out on the treadmill for uh, 30 days per day, five days per week. And then uh, after four months of uh, training, uh, treadmill, uh, we found that the uh, calcium level was increased in the lesser monkeys plasma. And also, we uh, human subjects were uh, trained to uh, participate in the uh, treadmill training and with modest to intensity, uh, high intensity, uh, like seven. 70 to 80 percent of feet uh, VO2 max, and one day, one hour per day, three days per week. And as you can see, the, the level of calcium B was uh, significantly increased uh, after four months of train uh, training, uh, compared to the uh, before they uh, joined the program or uh, with other uh, non-training sedentary group. And those sub human subjects were uh, tested, the uh, um, recall test uh, called like ostrich complex, complex figure test. And before, uh, before they uh, joined the program or after uh, the treadmill training program. And what we found was there is a, a strong positive correlation between the pre-post uh, difference in custom B plasma level and the late complex object uh, recall score, which means that custom B may have uh, may involved in the uh, exercise-induced uh, cognitive enhancement. 
So this is summary. We found that exercise can increase the catepsin B, and the catepsin B can directly, uh, directly uh, affect the uh, uh, neuronal cells by increasing uh, BDNF and double protein. And we uh, also found that uh, hippocamp uh, exercise induced uh, memory function uh, was not shown in the CASGP knockdown mice. And for the further study, uh, to characterize the role of CASGP in the neurons, we uh, now uh, generate the uh, uh, CASGP overexpression in neuronal cells. And uh, so far, we observed some this kind of data, and, and in the normal condition, the calcium overexpression, overexpressing a neuronal cell, uh, the survivability is not different from the controls. But when we start those, uh, when we uh, deprivate the uh, nutrition from the uh, cultured media, we found that uh, the calcium B overexpression cells lives lives longer. So, which means calcium be may involved in the cell survival in energy deprivate status in neuron cells. So, um, most of this work uh, was done at the NIA, NIH, with Dr. Josephine Egan and uh, Dr. Henry Bamfra, and most of the human work uh, with, was collaborated with um, MR Digital at German Center for Neurodegenerative Disease, and now I work with. Um, Professor Sungwook and Professor Samjegyang at Seoul National University. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you so much, Dr. Moon, for your uh, very exciting discovery. Um, is there any question from the audience? Uh, thank you for a very nice uh, presentation. My name is Chan Suyu from the uh, University of Tsukuba in Japan. Uh, uh, Cassin beam is maybe produced by muscle, is it right? Uh, we, yeah. But how about the uh, and Cassin beam can cause the brain blood barrier. Right. And how about the uh, maybe uh, Cassin beam can synthesize in brain or not? We also check the level of Cassin beam in the several brain parts, and uh, there was. <laughs> You know, increase, I mean, the significant increase in the custom be after, after exercise, long term exercise. Thank you. This is a good chance to ask question. Is there any more question for the floor? Yes. So, except the muscle, the, the other, the religion, the other, we have the other tissue? Yeah, I, I uh, in the literature, Libya, uh, we found that consumption B and other types can be secreted from other immune cells, uh, macrophages. So, you mean that the consumption B don't impact to the immune function? It could be, yeah, there are some. So, so do you experience to, to try to the effect of immune function? No. Uh, uh, as you know, so exercise training to upgrade the immune function. So that time, so for conception be the impact to the, our change of immune function. I think so. They could be such topic. I think so. <laughs> yeah. See any further questions? I have a one quick question. Um, I know you are uh, after the HPLC, uh, and then you screen down and you choose the uh, CTSB. Uh, are you interested in pursuing other? Is there any other um, protein that you find that could be interesting that you will be pursuing in the future? <laughs> it's quite a major project, I understand. Yeah, actually, we uh, for as you can see. Chart table. We try to uh, check the uh, other casein isoforms like uh, and, um, types like casein D and casein L. And actually, we didn't see the, any 
difference after exercise so we draw a bit. Thank you. Um, if there's no more questions, if there's, uh, please uh, thank you uh, to Dr. Mu. So our final speaker uh, for this session is Professor Lee jong sang from the Department of Physical Education in Daegu University. He has extensive publication with a very high citation and successful ground application record. Besides that, just on a personal note, it was a delight when I saw that he actually did his PhD in uh, Melbourne, I might keep. So, yeah, starting yeah. with uh, John Horton. <laughs> right. Yeah. So today he will be presenting on the regulation of myokine expression in highly trained muscle. Thank you. Uh, hi everybody, uh, my name is John Seven from Daegu University and today I'm going to uh, talk about the regulation uh, of the myokine uh, in trend muscle. Uh, before I just to start, um, I have to uh, say something uh, that I uh, the, you know, the data I'm presenting can, uh, not came from actually uh, my own lab, so I reviewed some of the um, uh, recent paper and uh, tried to transfer those information uh, to the audience, so please um, understand. Um, <clears throat> because um, my topic is the exercise and uh, exercise effects, on the myokine release, uh, release of myokines in trained muscle, I would like to say um, I would like to you know, to check with the myokine. What is the myokine? And uh, starting with um, term of myokine. Um, these days, um, you know, the physical inactivity is the most uh, one of the most uh, uh, you know uh, influential public uh, health problem. And it, the medical community began to uh, view exercise uh, as a part of life. The recognition of uh, exercise is factor on uh, the promoting or maintaining the health. Uh, the exercise now uh, uh, to receive as uh, you know the uh, medicine. Uh, to the many people and um, many clinicians are now considered and agreed uh, exercises and medicine. <coughs> uh, recently, uh, polypill, the concept of polypill uh, has emerged and the concept of the polypill we should know the, uh, is the uh, drug-free intervention for preventing uh, diverse uh, uh, disease condition. So the exercise is a very low cost and relatively free of adverse effects. Uh, that is why the, uh, the clinicians are now uh, agreed uh, exercise with medicine. And also, the, uh, in terms of the exercise is medicine, when we talk about uh, those things, we also need to uh, know effects of exercise uh, exert the dose response. So, uh, we could now uh, have a question with why I'm turning the exercise in medicine because I'm trying to make a connection between the myokine and uh, myokines uh, and exercise is medicine. So does the skeletal muscle actually manufacture the pill? Yes, it is. Skeletal muscle fiber actually produces several hundreds of secretory uh, factors or proteins uh, which exert a, a strong candidate to make a substantial fraction of the exercise polypill. So what is the myokine? We would say muscle-derived molecules, which is um, uh, uh, just, I bef uh, just before I mentioned uh, uh, several hundreds of myokine has uh, have been recognized so far. 
and have a, a very diverse effects in uh, muscle metabolism. Uh, I'd like to talk about a little bit about the curative roles of made by kindness in exercise muscle. This is a really broad area, so uh, I am cutting down uh, for major things, uh, few major things. As you probably know, the interleukin 6 is the prototype of the myokine, and the uh, IL 6 stimulates actually glucose uptake and literal oxidation in muscle and full body, and muscle growth and angiogenesis. So interleukin actually has the effects of it on energy sensing roles during exercise. Uh, interleukin 6, uh, as you will probably know, has an effect in the muscle cell. Um, uh, when it exerts the, uh, its unique role, it takes the pathway with the PRG kinase or AMPK uh, pathway, uh, resulting in the uh, fat oxidation, uh, increase of the fat oxidation and glucose uptake. It can also take the, uh, it, it can also release it into the circulation and uh, exert its unique role in other tissues. Okay, I'll skip this. An exercise increases the release of uh, uh, interleukin. So myocon uh, interleukin 6 release uh, increased condition with exercise intensity and duration and muscle mass recruitment when muscle glycogen stores are low. Uh, Opposite, uh, myocon interleukin 6 release uh, decreased uh, in conditions with muscle damage and carbohydrate ingestion. The so effects of chronic exercise on muscle derived to week six are still a controversial issue. Uh, I'm going to uh, talk about talk a little bit about my kind, myostatin, sorry. Myostatin. Myostatin probably a uh, previous speaker mentioned uh, is the first uh, my kind recognized in nineteen ninety seven. Myostatin have actually potential role in of muscle uh, growth. And myostatin uh, exert its uh, uh, role uh, using by the TGF and um, SMAT uh, pathways. And TGF, uh, you know, the SMAT pathways. Uh, Um, molecule of SMAD is the intracellular uh, proteins and um, uh, tra uh, transport. So, TGF beta is the uh, extracellular uh, protein that um, the signal transduced from the extracellular into the intracellular, then goes into the uh, uh, nucleus. Where activates the transcription, some of the uh, genes of gene transcription. So, my bio, uh, myostatin expression decreased by accurate endurance exercise, resistance endurance exercise, sorry, resist, resistance exercise and chronic endurance exercise. So, uh, as um, previous speaker mentioned, uh, myostatin is a very important to, you know, uh, control the older people uh, who had uh, some opinion. And also, it is important to maintain the um, uh, health condition in very weak condition. It has also the insulin resistance and obesity and other uh, biochemical actions. In Tulloican 15, this is the, uh, pretty much uh, new, however, uh, it shows the uh, muscle uh, myogenesis effect, so it could be the uh, interact between the uh, myostatin and the uh, interleukin somehow. 
So it, it is a really a good point to look at those two factors um, in future study. Origin is recently been identified and um, uh, is a novel PGC one elephant used my kind and link with uh, improved uh, early fitness in cardiac patient muscle mass and metabolic factors in healthy uh, people. And all other uh, myokines, uh, I'm going to skip some of those in these ones because of the lack of time. And, yep. It's the four. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read about the change of contraction induced to release myokine in trained muscle. Um, this study published uh, last year, actually, uh, and uh, published in Exercise Science um, a Domestic, it is a domestic journal. And um, uh, the researchers uh, were trying to look at the uh, lactic acid, uh, whether the lactic acid actually uh, exerts the expression of the, some of my clients in C2, C12 molecules. They made a situation with uh, different, a different amount of lactic acid uh, put into the C2, C12 molecules and uh, yeah, observed them um, uh, for three different time points. And what they found was the myostatic messenger RNA level was decreased only after four hours um, exposure, uh, exposure of lactic acid. And it was still also agreed, uh, agree, uh, there was some agreement with the uh, protein levels. So, myostatin uh, level, both messenger RNA and protein levels, was uh, probably uh, the, as expected uh, what they actually, um, the research wants. This indicates, indicates probably the myostatin has a role with the uh, uh, muscle synthesis. Uh, because the lactic acid is more likely an um, exercise intensity way, uh, changing uh, exercise intensity way, so increase with the uh, uh, lactic acid concentration could be uh, uh, exert uh, some kind of um, uh, protein synthesis. They also look at the FNDC5 protein expression at the APK. Uh, protein and uh, uh, ACC uh, protein expression. All these um, data uh, showed not consistent um, uh, effects or the consistent result. Uh, for example, if when DC5 vessel RNA was decreased uh, after a short period of the lactic acid uh, uh, exposure. However, in the protein expression was not uh, changed. Uh, <coughs> So I would not, or oh, I could not say anything, any uh, meaning, meaningful, uh, meaningful point I can say. Sorry. In 2007, <coughs> Nielsen, the group of Nielsen and Patterson uh, studied with uh, interleukin 15 in skeletal muscle. They focused on actually exercise and muscle fiber type composition. Uh, what they found to, uh, from this study was this is a touch muscle, uh, this is a triceps, a brachase, and um, uh, vastus lateralis and solis. And they tried to look at the uh, cell culture study and also the um, resistance exercise, the effect of resistance exercise. Um, and what they found from this is 15. Well, say would say increased or IL-15 maintained higher in type 2 muscle fibers compared to type 1 muscle fibers. However, they uh, did not find they did not find any uh, uh, difference between muscle uh, 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 difference in uh, protein levels uh, uh, among different muscle fibers. With uh, resistance exercise, uh, when they look at the uh, effects of resistance exercise, after resistance exercise, only 24 hours uh, after 
the registered exercise methodology was increased. However, the protein level did not change any, uh, anything. So uh, they conclude from this study uh, was the um, IR-15 methodology level is enhanced in skeletal muscle dominated by type 2 fiber and resistance induced increased muscle uh, IR-15 methodology. Uh, however, the protein levels or trans uh, did not change, so they, uh, they uh, tra uh, translated into the probable protein uh, level. Translation uh, did not have any uh, uh, effects. Recently, um, some uh, Japanese people uh, have done study with um, ACTM3 uh, genotype and uh, athletic performance. This is not actually uh, you know, the, my kind of study. However, uh, I put this slide for uh, later uh, what I'm going to talk about. And something what I'm going to talk about. In this study, they tried to look at the uh, genotype difference, whether the genotype difference makes the uh, exercise performance or sports performance uh, uh, different, differently. And uh, what they found from this study was uh, genotype R and Rx is the more likely power and uh, speed uh, portion. And um, they uh, uh, they thought uh, genotype X and X is the um, more likely endurance types of um, fiber, uh, sorry, uh, endurance types of genotype. So when they look at the, uh, the level of the athletes, the rational level and national level and international level is goes down if uh, these two uh, added and um, the other one is um, uh, comparing these two and the other one was the increased the, the rate of uh, percentage increase. This was from all sprint and power athletes and um, similar phenomenon uh, had found um, from all endurance athletes. Uh, so showing uh, down here. Uh, what I'd like to mention is the cross term now is um, my kinds actually produced or released from the muscle. However, as probably uh, Professor Kim Hyun Cho mentioned before, uh, we know the some of our uh, kind, which is you know the uh, uh, kind of um, uh, cytokines. And adipokines is uh, released from the adipocytes. And what we need to look at is um, those two or is alpokine and uh, myokine or something released from bone, something released from other organs have uh, communicated to each other. And we say that uh, we say for that is the cross talk between the organs. In this study uh, published in 19, uh, 2007, Authors mentioned actually uh, IL-15 is recently discovered and uh, what they mentioned is interesting although uh, interleukin 15 has been demonstrated as uh, having a number of impact. It, it has uh, already shown uh, by many papers on skeletal muscle in vivo and in vitro. It seems to play a role reducing adipose tissue mass so it has actually adverse effect, or you know the, the opposite effect. So they, what they mention here is um, IL-15 in muscle fat cross talk has been hypothesized. So from that, uh, 2007, uh, actually cross talk or uh, the inter interprosal you know the uh, communication was uh, considered. More recently, 2016, Mark Fabroyo published uh, all these things, and uh, uh, what he mentioned uh, the realization of the skeletal muscle region and the prime organ. And what they said is here uh, 
which participants in tissue crosstalk provided a critical increase in the exercise health per line. So, what I, what I tried to mention the um, uh, tissue crosstalk should happen or should be, uh, tissue crosstalk is happening maybe or, or, or in, in our body everywhere. This year, uh, maybe a uh, Northern European published with um, RSM, which is the recently uh, identified uh, my clients. So, here again, the action of the uh, Irish and muscle and other side, this protein is considered as myofibrin. This is the new terms now here. Actually mentioned before, however, uh, now aripokin and myokines, it's combined and um, uh, new terms with the aripomyokines. So a lot of paper now are publishing, uh, a lot of papers are now uh, publicized with the topic, uh, topic with the muscle adipose tissue cross term as look at here. So actually uh, uh, myokine produced from the skeletal muscle, it's a lot of different kinds of myokines uh, uh, exist. And also adipose tissue, adipose tissue uh, relates to lots of different kinds of uh, uh, adipose kind. And some of these factors actually uh, you know, relate from both organs or both tissues. But we don't know actually about what difference or how they communicate to each other. We just say from the result, it could be the cross uh, top. However, we need to uh, mechanisms of uh, the how they cross to each other. But this is a um, potential research uh, topic I made because um, I uh, my feel uh, I was very sorry to you know, deliver these things because I uh, did not put any data from uh, drawn by myself, so I thought um, it is only a uh, thing I can uh, say, uh, I, I can uh, uh, reward for the audience if I can put uh, some of the possible research topics. Uh, as I mentioned before, SCTN3 is actually uh, muscle fiber composition differences. I mean, depend on the muscle fiber composition and muscle strength, and sprint performance. It is actually uh, you know, involved with these things. However, with the genotype difference, the genotype with the RR and RX, more likely exerts the power of the athletic performance and relationship with the athletic status. And however, SCTN 3XX is the def uh, deficiency of alpha uh, activin 3 protein, so it is better endurance performance in athletes. What I'd like to say from here. So now we know the ACTN3 RLE have uh, uh, this characteristic. And if we put some of my, my myokines which can cross talk or which can you know, uh, make some uh, interaction with the, these things, could be uh, good research. So for example, uh, IL-15 is the resistance exercise actually regulates IL-15. Uh, expression in muscle and also had uh, an anabolic effects and mainly expressed in type to muscle fibers. So if we combine these two, question can be drawn, like a degree of association, what is the degree of association and the uh, relationship with muscle fiber composition, we should know type 1, type 2 or type 1, type 2A, type 2B, it could be different. If we start with um, this question for the research and then many, many uh, different or many, many 
uh, studies can be you know, opened for the future. The other thing I would like to mention for the uh, study is um, recently also uh, people, these people published a lot of exercise and cellular state, uh, stress. Cellular stress is more likely oxygen uh, you know, deficiency, uh, from, uh, drawn from gas to deficiency. And, uh, well, they try to look at the different metabolic stress and mitochondrial disease and exercise and resistance training. So what these two factors actually uh, influence the muscle myokines. However, these two factors cannot differentiate in by one study. So it, it is the great uh, to look at the uh, look at if releasing factors can be addictive, whether these two stress, whether these two stress conditions can be added or, or can uh, uh, can be you know the look at the different the different differently. So pin out the pure and unique independent factors, both from exercise and resistance training and metabolic stress and mitochondrial disease, it need to be uh, looked at. Finally, aripomyokine, I would say aripomyokine, aripomyokine and myokine, to combine with those two, our concentration change in intraperson. So, for example, we just measuring or we just um, uh, analyze using the muscle or you analyze it in or blood. However, we should know the the releasing point. If the releasing point uh, is the muscle, the how they did not uh, how they uh, change it, the concentration in v uh, sorry in uh, venous and in our there will be much history there, I think, uh, because um, the circulation, we, we do not, we say myokine or aripokine related to the circulation, however, we do not know actually what actually happens in muscle after we release. And also the time for the effects of exercise and training need to be uh, done more detailed. Uh, mm, summary, regular exercise is a lifestyle intervention with the most profound of regulatory effects on hundreds of genes involved in tissue, maintenance and homostasis in prime complex, prostate, between muscle and other tissue, data drawn from muscles of highly competitive athletes exist still only limited ranges. Therefore, more researches are to be required before any form conclusive comments are delivered. I have to I would like to actually mention one thing. Um, if you look at the uh, literature, you cannot find uh, actually study have done with uh, study have done using very highly uh, trained muscle uh, topic with uh, my clients. So it was my difficulty to prepare the, uh, for this presentation. So, uh, however, this uh, will be the uh, next or future study uh, topics. So, uh, thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very much, Professor Lee, for your very informative uh, talk. Any question for the floor, please? Question. I'll just ask one quick question now. Um, you were mentioning about the regulation of myokine expression in highly trained uh, muscle. I was just wondering, is there any difference between highly trained muscle and non-trained muscle in, in that aspect? That is the point to look at um, for future study. That's so, exactly. yes. so the only one study looked the uh, the one study uh, looked the difference between the genotypes. And no study actually used the um, uh, highly trained muscle to look at the uh, myokines changes. So that's the point. And uh, well, I would say, you know, in highly trained muscle, they 
you must read or must have some points of different, some uh, different points we done to uh, the second to personal pupils, must work. However, yeah, I would say it Thank you very much. Um, finally, no question. If there is no question, then uh, please join me to thank all the speakers and thank you very much for attending this session. <laughs>